Hello and welcome to the latest Insider Interview. Our guest today is Richard Buxton, manager of the Jupiter UK Alpha Fund. Richard, thank you very much for coming in and speaking with us. Not at all. Richard, you've been investing in UK shares for nearly 40 years. What are valuations like today and how does this period compare with other periods in the past? Well, valuations are very supportive in part because there's been such persistent disinvestment um, really since the, the Brexit referendum. Uh, both UK investors and international have, have pretty consistently. So, you know, we're at levels, valuation levels where historically, if you can shut your eyes, buy now, you know, come back in 10 years time, you will always have made money. Um, so, and many of our companies very strong balance sheets, you know, quite high dividend payouts. Um, so, so there's definitely value and, and opportunity in our market. Um, challenges, well, you know, this is an unusual kind of downturn. Um, I mean, I don't think we're actually going to have anything like the scale of, of recession that perhaps many people fear. Um, you know, in the early 90s, you know, we had three consecutive years of negative GDP. Obviously, interest rates were stuck at 15% because we were defending the currency and the exchange rate mechanism. We don't have any of that now. And instead, we've got an incredibly strong labour market, partly because of demographics and retirement and a shrinking workforce. Um, but as a result, you know, we're seeing you know, reasonable levels of, of wage growth. Um, inflation clearly is beginning to fall, but um, question whether it'll actually fall all the way back down to 2%. I rather doubt it. Um, so, so a downturn where you've got you know, a full labour market, you know, some reasonable wage inflation. You know, companies have got good balance sheets because any company that needed to raise cash did so in 2020 with the first wave of the pandemic. Um, so the the bad balance sheet today is is with the government you know it's the government that has all the debt um and the bank of england you know with with all the, the guilts that they've bought um so so i'm of the view that it's much more likely that the, the uk economy is just sort of very flat for a period of time rather than actually having the sort of downturn that is normally associated with fear of unemployment and rising unemployment, etc. So, so I think um, I'm actually, you know, a bit more sanguine about the prospects than, you know, certainly the Bank of England has been. And in this environment, what stocks, what sectors do you invest in then? Well, I think you can invest in more cyclical companies, both industrials and consumer facing uh, companies. Um, because as I think actually the world is not sort of about to, to, to fall off a cliff. Um, actually, if anything, in the US, you know, the central bank there, the Federal Reserve is, is struggling to rein in the economy because, again, they've got a, a very strong labour market. Um, so although, you know, they have been raising interest rates and, and housing transactions have clearly slowed, which again we've seen here since uh, the disastrous mini budget in September, I don't think we're going to enter any sort of, you know, material downturn. So, so you can uh, back companies that are, you know, more cyclically orientated, um, as well as, you know, some of those tr more traditional growth stocks um, and indeed, you know, financials. Um, Banks, you know, have really struggled for 10 years because A, the regulator was requiring them to build up more and more capital post the financial crisis, and B, interest rates were zero. So, you know, that's been a very tough background for them. Whereas now, you know, with interest rates, you know, at three, four percent, um, you know, they can actually make a decent return. And which banks do you own in the portfolio? Yeah, I own Lloyd's and, and Barclays. And, and Lloyd's is just, I think, a a very good play on the nature of the, the UK economy and that actually we're not in a bad shape. Um, they're, they're very capital and cash generative. They're very prudent in their lending. Um, so you know, the recent results, I, I listened to the, the call and you know, really all the way out to sort of 2025, 26, you know, they're pretty upbeat about um, the way that that change in, in interest rates is going to help the profitability. And, uh, and as a result, you know, they're going to be generating a lot of cash. They're going to be giving a lot back to shareholders through, through dividends and share buybacks. So um, although it trades at book value, 
that book value is going to rise over time. So um, it is possible over time that you actually do get a re-rating of a stock like that. Because if the market can trust the consistency of it and that there isn't some horrible bad debt cycle ahead to, to go through, they because they are very prudent in their loans, um, then actually there's no reason why they couldn't trade above book value for the consistency of the delivery. You've invested through lots of crises and market cycles. How does your experience help you manage the fund? You're, you're right. This is a job that, that experience counts. And if you've been through a few cycles and downturns and crashes and panics, um, uh, just you know, not to panic. Um, say last September, October, you know, markets have been falling for nine months. Uh, we had our own little mini crisis in the UK around that budget. Um, but sentiment and uh, the mood music had got so negative that you just felt very confident that this was a moment to actually be adding to positions, not not panicking. And we've we've seen many shares rallying 30, 40, 50 percent from from that low. So um, watchword number one is just learning the, the, the patience not to be spooked out of, of good companies at a, at a bad point in the in the cycle. You also invest in the energy sector. Why do you like it so much? And have you been selling shares given the strong performance last year? Yes, I don't think it's going to do anything like as well as it did over the last 12 months. Um, but again, the companies are, are throwing off enormous amounts of cash. They're able to reinvest in their businesses and in the renewables, and yet still give um, yields and, and share buybacks to investors. So. And I do think that um, over the next several years, it is likely that we have persistently higher energy prices than we have had in, in recent years. Um, partly because you know, the companies have, have got the message from investors and you know, they're not drilling for huge amounts more oil and gas. Um, as though they are taking the cash from that and investing in you know, wind and solar and so on. So, as so a result of, of high prices, you know, you haven't had a supply response. You know, for decades, the rule in commodity markets was that the cure for high prices was high prices because it would attract capital. You would drill, you would find, um, and, and prices would fall. And, and equally, the, the, the cure for low prices was low prices because capital would withdraw, supply would contract, and prices would rise. Um, but the whole of the you know the net zero zeitgeist and and you know rightly the move to an energy transition has broken that sort of golden rule. So so high prices are not curing the supply issues. So so I fear that for the next several years, as I say, we, we could have you know persistently higher energy prices than we have had historically. And and that will you know, mean that these businesses will continue to generate pretty strong levels of cash flow. And of the two giant oil companies, Shell and BP, do you own them both? Do you own just one of them? And um, why? I, I, I own them both. Um, it's been remarkable to watch the last couple of years that um, Shell was clearly uh, much more advanced in terms of recognizing the energy transition uh, and you know, investing in wind and solar and so on. Um, but with the new ish uh, chief executive of BP the last couple of years, if anything, they've they've leapfrogged Shell in the, the scale of their commitment, um, their determination to uh, invest in, in hydrogen, um, to invest in EV charging stations and, and so on. So uh, so no, I've 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 had both because they are acting slightly differently, although in share price terms, clearly they're, they're very strongly correlated. You said you're relatively comfortable with the UK economy, but the market is also affected by international factors. So what is the biggest risk right now for UK investors? Well, the UK stock market has always been, thank heavens, a very internationally orientated one. I mean, 75% of our, our earnings come from outside the UK. Um, so we are you know, a, a good play on, on global levels of, of growth and activity. And clearly, we've got a number of companies that are very specifically Asia-focused, you know, the Prudential, HSBC, et cetera. Um, so no, I think the, um, uh, the risks are on the global front. Um, 
will the United States have to raise interest rates higher than people currently think to, to slow the economy and, and rein in inflation? Um, will that you know, upset the bond market and, and hence valuations in equities? Um, say the, the concern that wage inflation at sort of four, five, six percent may be beginning to get embedded in the US and UK economies. So inflation is falling, but will it fall all the way back to the 2% targets the central banks have? I'm not sure. Um, so, and, and clearly in the UK, I mean, we've, we've got a, a difficult period to go through, um, say, pretty stagnant economic activity. Um, but underlying, we've got a, a, a huge entrepreneurial dynamic in the UK. We've got strong new business formation. Most people are employed by small businesses here. Um, so, so actually, I, I think on a, on a medium term view, and given the valuations in the UK, I, I'm pretty um, upbeat about uh, the prospect. You can invest up to 30% of the fund in international shares. Do you ever use that allowance? The, the rules would allow me to do so, but I, I never have. I've always gone, well, this, this is um, a UK equity fund. You know, I don't feel the need to, to reach out and invest in, in non-UK companies. Um, I think there are sufficiently interesting, attractive opportunities um, in the UK uh, itself. And finally, the question we ask all of our guests, do you personally invest in the funds? Absolutely. Um, I, I don't invest in individual stocks and shares. You know, all of my wealth, apart from my Jupiter shares, is invested in this fund and, and always uh, has been. Um, I eat my own cooking. Richard, thanks for coming into the studio. Uh, my pleasure. And that's all we've got time for today. You can check out more insider interviews on our YouTube channel where you can like, comment and subscribe. See you next time.